2016. The time is 7 p.m. and the regular meeting of the Greensburg Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order. We'd all rise and face the flag and the second strike to the Allegiance to the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the city requests that participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that is available on the table at the back of the room. John, would you call the roll, please? Roy. Yes. President. Richard. Yes. Evan. Here. Steve. Here. Bruce. Here. Okay, you all saw a copy of the minutes from our last meeting, which was in September 20th of 2016. Is there any additions or corrections that need to be made to those? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion that we approve the minutes. So, do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes from the September 20th, 2016 meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, the motion stands approved. New business this evening. TMC Indiana 2 LLC is requesting a permanent variance for 1500 through 1516 North Lincoln Street, Greensburg, Indiana, as allowed by the City of Greensburg Code of Ordinances, Section 155.242B2. The permanent variance involves reducing a front yard setback depth on the bare shell lane frontage of the parcel to a depth of 29 feet, which is less than the 60 feet front yard depth required by the City of Greensburg Zoning Ordinance, Section 155.034A. Also, a temporary variance is requested on the same parcel to permit providing only 31 parking spaces during the construction of the new building and providing only 25 parking spaces during the demolition and repaving of the existing store site, rather than the 70 parking spaces required during the construction of the new store and the 87 spaces required during the demolition of the existing building and repaving of the area for additional parking. All as required by City of Greensburg Code of Ordinances, Section 155.087B. At the conclusion of construction, all required parking spaces will be provided. Wrong. <coughs> Property in question, uh, probably most of us know, is the CVS site. The existing CVS store is here and there's a little strip mall located right in here. This is Barishell Lane across here and Lincoln Street here. The petitioner is proposing the construction of a new, CV, new CVS store in this general area. This dash line here I believe, represents the existing strip mall and this dash line up here represents the existing CVS store. Um, the front yard setback provided along Lincoln is in conformance with our ordinance. The uh, setback along Barishell uh, is, well, I said 29 in the information I gave you to be safe. It's around 30 feet. Um, the question is, because of the wording on our ordinance, I can read the ordinance and sometimes I read it and I think it says on corner lots, both the front yards, and other times I think maybe it says the developer gets a choice as to which is the front yard. So we needed to bring the parking question that I'll get to in just a second here to you also, so I let you sort out what our ordinance says and what your requirements are relative to the um, 
situation along here. Now you may notice that right here, I believe, is the southern boundary of the strip mall, and it is further south from where the proposed uh, building line would be. So if you approve this and allow them to occupy this space in here, it will uh, be slightly north of the bounds of the existing building. The parking question um, has to do with, there is a line across here that they are proposing as a construction phasing. So, so this area, I guess, would be fenced off and they would come in here and demolish this building and these parking spaces that exist down here would no longer be available for the operation of the current store that's located up in here. They would build this and when that is completed, they would develop the parking south of this line and then they would reverse their operation. They would operate their store here and demolish this building and then build the parking show in this area. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think uh, there were 31 spaces that were going to be available while they were building the new store. And then when they opened the new store and while they demolished this, they would be down to I believe it was 25 spaces. When they're finished, uh, 91, I think, was to be provided. An ordinance requires 87 spaces, and I will offer my opinion about our parking ordinance, I think for retail sales, one space per 150 square foot of building area is one of the higher parking requirements you will find. I researched uh, four or five of our neighbors and they're more like 200, one space per 200, 250 to 300 square foot. <coughs> so they have lesser parking requirements than what we have. And just for your general information, we were talking about the uh, reduced setback from our ordinance. The uh, southern elevation here is what the uh, building along Barishell Lane would look like. And these are the views of the other sides. Craig Forge, I'm with TM Crowley Associates. We are a preferred developer for CVS uh, in Indiana and several other states in the Midwest. Um, as we're proposing to develop this thing, what you see in blue highlighted here, this is the existing building today. Um, there is a fence today that's on the adjoining property owner and property that comes down to this location here and it stops. We're proposing to put a fence in, a board fence all the way down to uh, Pass our drive through so that any cars or headlights that might be in the drive through would be blocked by the uh, uh, board fence. Plus, we're proposing to do some additional landscaping that we're willing to put it on either side of the fence, whichever, it, and makes it look good for the adjoining property owner. The joint property owner. But, uh, today, there's actually, I believe, there's only about a five foot landscape strip in there currently today. Our landscape strip along the east side of the property ranges from uh, nine feet seven inches on the south to like 11 feet nine inches on the north. So it'll be providing a little bit more of a landscape buffer than what's there today. Okay, the multi-tenant building that's behind the store that you're wanting to erect, uh -huh. it will remain open? No, it, it, it'll be demolished and it'll be, it'll, it'll, those it'll tenants have been, are being relocated to another location. Okay, so that, those would be out of there. Yep. That's correct. Okay, that's, that's correct. That's just part of safety. Yep, the only thing that will be in operation is the CVS store itself, store itself during construction. Will there be, um, during construction, then 
will you be using the exit out onto Barishel Lane? The way I see it there, it doesn't look like you will. But no, it'll only, well, it'll only be used for construction traffic. Okay. And so the, my, my plan right now for during construction is we come into this red line and we, we put construction fence all the way across. Okay, I, I really so don't want cars going back and forth during construction. It's not safe. Right. Well, that was one of my concerns. But you, you yep. address. I, I was under the impression, as Ron was, that, that that was for some time that that building, that, that strip mall there, for, for lack of another term, was going to still be being used. So that I see from your drawing that that's not the case. So. Any other questions for some board members, Davis? During the construction period on the new buildings, yes. will the drive up still be available on the old building? Yes. There'll be a one way traffic on the mm -hmm. south side of the building. If it gets narrow here and we want to leave the parking on the south side of the building, so it'll be one way traffic flow around the building. And now the drive through back here, so that'll allow us to be Trust me, CBS will want to clear the store manager will be yelling at me. <laughs> so what are these uh, things right there? Those are, those are uh, well, that's the uh, sidewalk, and those are the uh, ADA. So those are the sidewalks you're going to put yeah. in yep. down all the way around them? Yep. You'll see them both up. You know, comes out with a little bit of level concrete, and then it ramps up on both sides. And then you have them both up. What's the distance from the sidewalk to your your driveway for your drive through? The um, is this a curve that's going to be for the drive through here? Yeah. So th this is a curve here. So you'll have a 24 foot wide drive lane. It'll be one way. After you get past here, it'll be one way going out. So you have 24 foot drive lane, one drive lane for your uh, your stacking for your drive through, and then one bypass lane. So you have 24 feet there. You have another. Uh, approximately five feet to uh, the, the right of the line. Is that a grass here? Right? It'll be grass. <coughs> so you'll have, I don't know this exact distance, but you know that's roughly 10 feet, so you're, you're roughly 10 feet between the sidewalk and the curb line. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from board members? Anyone from the audience here to speak on behalf of this petition? Any other questions or concerns for Ron or any other thing on this issue? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we approve the request to limit for the limited amount of parking spaces during construction and demolition with the exit noted that when it's done, it'll meet all the requirements. And so far, you right. know, all, the all that will be done. We're not doing anything other than changing the setback from the 29 feet. Yeah. You can read that, I'll just give my opinion on it. You can read that kind of, whether that's a side yard or a front yard, Sometimes you read it and you think it's two front yards, but we all know we don't really have two front, nobody has two front yards. Even if you're on a corner lot, you always consider one of them your side yard, so. Yeah. It's just, it's going to be a tight, I guess when they go through the drive through they have to go on around the it's, building. It's all one-way traffic on the back side of the building northbound. That yeah, would be one way going on. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the setback in the parking space. Motion's been made that we approve the setback to 29 feet and approve the limited number of parking spaces during the um, demolition and construction period. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. John, would you call the roll, please? <coughs> Bruce? Yes. Steve? Yes. David? Yes. Richard? Yes. Roy? Yes. That's been approved. <coughs> Moving on to item number two. 
Larry and Cindy McCammon are requesting a permanent variance on a parcel of ground located along the south side of Park Road from approximately 520 feet east of County Road 150 West to approximately 1,300 feet east of County Road 150 West. Greensburg, Indiana, as allowed by the City of Greensburg Code of Ordinances, Section 155.242b2. The permanent variance involves permitting an accessory building with an area of up to 3,000 square feet for each of the five parcels to be created by a proposed subdivision, which would be in excess of the maximum area of 600 feet permitted by the City of Greensburg Zoning Ordinance Sections 155.016A1 and 155.020C. And just for the record, you'll notice in your packet that we got a letter from um, Ross Garvey Walker and Robin's attorneys, and it addresses issues that will be considered by the Planning Commission, not by BZA, the drainage issues and cuts to the, for the driveways for these homes are not what we're deliberating about. We're just looking at the accessory buildings. Just want to make that clear. This part right here only pertains to the size of the accessory building. Ron. Um, Mr. Ron. The parcel in question is located on the south side of Park Road. Here is County Road 150 West, and the area outlined in orange here is the site. It is zoned R1. In an R1 district, you are allowed by our zoning ordinance accessory buildings, which are freestanding garages, pool houses, uh, storage sheds, those kinds of structures. You are allowed one accessory structure with an area up to 600 square feet. Uh, the petitioner will be before the Planning Commission this evening requesting approval of a primary plat for a five lot subdivision that looks like this. And again, this is the boundary of the site here. You are not to, uh, it's not your duty to consider the subdivision, rather, it is your uh, responsibility to consider granting the request the petitioner has asked to be permitted to have on each of these five lots an accessory building with an area up to 3,000 square feet. These lots as proposed range from roughly 2.4 acres up to 4.3 acres. They are by city standards quite large lots. I believe in my report to you I had told you that there were proposed 20 foot side yard setbacks. In fact, the developer has revised that and those side yard setbacks are now shown on the material being presented to the Planning Commission at 10 foot, which does satisfy our side yard setback requirements for our one district. So the question before you is, will you allow accessory buildings up to Questions of Ron by board members. I would recommend to you that if you do uh, approve this request, that any approval you grant be conditional upon the Planning Commission approving the plan on both primary and secondary. Or we get the cart before the horse here, are we going to, going to get a zoning ordinance approval before this even? It's it, just developed. It's a little bit chicken and egg. Uh, the petitioner is asking to have a covenant on the plat that allows up to 3,000 square foot accessory buildings. Um, it would be nice if we knew what they were going to look like. Where it was going to be. That will be for the Planning Commission to decide those issues, though. We're only really dealing with the size of them. And 
on, on that note, I want to, we've been discussing, you know, having higher quality, more expensive homes in Greensburg. Supposedly one of the weaknesses that people looking at our community to come here is that we do not have things like this, large lots that allow them to do things that you just wouldn't be able to do on a regular, what we think of as a city lot. Okay, so, um, you know, we're building the, Whitaker's got the place out there with the preserve at Sand Creek. Yeah, the preserve at Sand Creek, thank you. Um, you know, and again, those are larger homes and they don't really follow what we here in Greensburg have normally seen, so just something for you to think about is that people that are high-end, want to build a high-end house, they want to maybe have a pool and a pool, you know, building out there by it, and then a garage and it, who knows what else. That, that's what they want. That's the amenities that seem to be now that they seem to want for those type of homes. I probably should also mention that the uh, plat will show, I think it's a 105 foot setback for the front yards off of the front property line, um, where our ordinance requires, I believe it's 30 foot in our own district, so um, the proposed setback is much greater. Those homes would set much further off of the road and be difficult to follow. Well, they're really deep logs. They are very deep logs, yeah. yeah. They're nice homes just to the just to the west of it. Right. And to the north. Any other questions <laughs> you're on? I noticed Larry's here. Do you have anything you wish to say, Larry, or Keegan about this? Um, you know, the covenants have been put together. I know we put some things in them uh, to kind of ease you guys with what's going to be built out there. I don't want to be selling lots for X amount of dollars and have somebody put up a 3,000 square foot shack. I'm not looking to do that. I even think in the ordinances or in the covenants that we put together, I think we even asked that the uh, auxiliary building be behind the main residence, um, that driveway from the home to the auxiliary building's address, that it has to be paved or it has to be some sort of paved, concrete or asphalt. Um, you know, the colors and all those things have to match the exterior of the home. Um, but you know, I, I mean, what, and we've even got it set up to where you can't leave an RV outside, you know, if, I mean, that, you know, with the building, you know, we're, we're looking to make the building nicer and, and, you know, an indoor storage or, you know, they could put whatever they wanted in there, but, uh, you know, we're trying to make it nice. And we, if, if you guys have concerns or anything like that, I feel like they would be, uh, put at ease if the covenances or if you guys needed to see something added to the covenances we'd be more than happy to do that thank you larger building also larry could you please the larger building also yourself. auxiliary building whether you allow three thousand or what uh, the terrain in the back there's an easement that's going through the back for water you know about three thousand acres drain through there um, they're going to need equipment. You're not going to mow <laughs> back in that ravine and through that, that easement. With, you know, you're going to have to have a small tractor and, and you're going to have to have tools to keep it clean and, 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 and nice. Um, building, they can't, I, you've got the covenants, they can't build less than 3,000 square foot if it's a ranch. They have to have a three car garage, it has to be brick, rock, stucco. Um, and we are looking for higher end. Uh, the lots, so. Uh, Started 100,000, so I don't think they're going to be building uh, uh, anything uh, too small on it. Well, I mean, our restrict oh, 3,000 square feet. I doubt that there'll be a 3,000 square feet. Now. But they have the and the auxiliary building, in case they wanted to build a carriage building, you know, a separate garage, like Wade has, Wild has on. And, uh, that's the reason we asked. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody from the audience here to speak on this petition? Well, 
Jim, if you'd come and just state your name for the record, please. Jim Ezra, um, I like Dawn, Barnes and I own the property uh, that would be adjoining this. And I guess my question is, why does the building need to be so big? Uh, I've got a 36 by 45 uh, house building on, on our property, and I've got a little Kubota size tractor and a bush hog and a riding lawnmower and all various garden stuff in mine. And, I mean, it's ample. Uh, I just, I, it just seems like, like it's a lot. Buildings. Yes, I understand it's going to be big houses and, and very nice and so forth, but I, I still think it's just a, a excess, uh, excessive in size of the building. Anybody else in the audience to speak on this petition? Any more questions from board members? If not, I entertain a motion that we approve the request for the variance to allow accessory buildings up to 3,000 square feet on each of the five lots. Yeah. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Motion's been made and seconded. John, will you call the roll, please? Richard? Yes. Roy? Yes. David? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Okay. Next item of business is report for the zoning from the zoning administrator. Um, I can tell you that there will be a meeting in January. We do have a petition. Um, for a sign lines. So there will be a meeting in January. Um, beyond that, I don't know too much. Any, any general questions of me? Any other yeah. questions? Do you need that sign off sheet for that little video we were supposed to watch? Is that the internal control yeah. video? Uh, those need to go to the clerk treasurer's office. You can, we can drop it up at the front desk, but I think Sarah will get it there. I'm going to be out the rest of the week. So. Got to use it up for the AC or? Any other items for uh, BCA members? Anything else you want to talk about? It's not, I entertain a motion. We adjourn. Done.